Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, True Crime and Felines. For my returning subscribers, welcome back my feline friends. For those that are new here, my name is Brandy and every Friday I bring you a true crime case or mystery along with one or more of my 14 felines. I hope my videos are entertaining enough that you hit that subscribe button and become a feline friend. This week's case takes place in Arkansas and it starts in 1996 and ends up in the year 2020. Three family members would end up dead allegedly by the hand of the same man across 23 years. So let's get started. Horseshoe Lake is located near Memphis, Tennessee, but is actually in Hughes, Arkansas. It's known for its very upscale living and vacation homes. Among these upscale homes is one called the Snowden House. It was built in 1919 and was one of the first homes on the lake. It is now the lake's most impressive property. It's three stories and 6,000 square feet. It has grand marble flooring and a marble fireplace. There is a sweeping staircase as you come through the front entrance, along with an antique crystal chandelier. In 1994, this property served as the filming location for the movie The Client, starring Susan Sarandon and Tommy Lee Jones. Sally Snowden McKay owned this property at the time and many others around the lake. She was known to rent a lot of her property out to renters and tenants. And at the time, the Snowden house was being rented out and it was a bed and breakfast. So Sally actually didn't live at the Snowden house at the time. She lived a couple houses down. Sally's nephew, Joseph Lee Baker, also lived with her. Joseph was a popular Memphis blues musician. He was the key member in bands like Moloch and Mudboy and the Neutrons. Unfortunately, in September of 1996, Sally and Joseph's bodies were found in their house. Sally was 75 years old and Joseph was 52 years old. They had both been shot, then somebody had set fire to their house and fled. Sally's car was also found wrecked on a road leading into the lake. Authorities investigated and they would end up making an arrest two months after Sally and Joseph's murder. Travis Lewis, who was only 16 years old at the time, had been arrested and charged with two counts of capital murder. Even at 16, Travis already had a juvenile record. He had charges on there from curfew violations to a aggravated assault. Travis's parents had actually rented a house from Sally, so Sally was their landlord, and Travis's mother Gladys worked at the Snowden house as a housekeeper. So Travis knew Sally had money and some family heirlooms that were pretty expensive, so he decided to rob Sally and Joseph's house. But apparently Sally and Joseph had come home early or unexpectedly come home and caught Travis in the middle of his robbery. Travis would confess to shooting both Sally and Joseph, stating that when they came home and startled him in the middle of his robbery, he just shot them. Travis ended up being tried as an adult, even though he was 16. Travis would try to retract his confession, stating that although he was at the house during the robbery, he was with another man, and that man was actually the one who shot Sally and Joseph. But when police looked into this, the man that he stated committed this act had a really solid alibi, so there was no way that he could have been at the house. Travis, however, insisted that he was innocent and never committed the murders, only was there to commit the robbery, though he did admit to helping set the house on fire. 
Now, Sally and Joseph's family did not believe in the death penalty, so they wanted that taken off the table. So, in the end, Travis was convicted and he ended up getting a 28 and a half year prison sentence. The family, even though they agreed that the death penalty was too harsh, uh, they were not quick to forgive, and any time that Travis came up for parole, the family would write letters and correspondence to the parole board uh, stating that Travis should be serving his full sentence and not let out early. Now, Martha McKay was the daughter of Sally, and she bought the Snowden house after Sally's death from the family trust. As a child, Martha spent a lot of time at the Snowden house, and that was kind of her relaxing place. So she wanted to restore it to its former glory, and that's exactly what she did. She kept its original condition as much as possible, but also made a few modern amenities with it as well. She was very smart when it came to saving money and going green. She had a geothermal system installed that used the water from the lake to heat and cool the house. She also had 50% of the house's electricity fueled by wind power. Martha was known as a big-hearted, caring woman who everyone immediately liked upon meeting her for the first time. It was hard to find anyone that had anything bad to say about her. Martha looked for and tried to see the good in people, even somebody like Travis Lewis. Martha wanted answers about her mother and cousin's death from 1996 because there seemed to be some confusion on whether Travis Lewis acted alone or not. So she ended up reaching out to Travis while he was serving his sentence and started asking him some questions. According to authorities, Travis took this opportunity to kind of manipulate Martha and get him her on his side. Over time, Martha became convinced that Travis was not responsible for her mother and cousin's death. Due to him being so young when it happened, she felt it was unfair to keep him behind bars this long and that he was probably rehabilitated by now. Martha and Travis became friends, and Martha even traveled to the prison to see him in person. Now, friends and family did not like Martha doing this, and they would tell her to be careful and don't be so taken in by what he has to say and quick to believe him, because even though Technically, there could have been another assailant and he wasn't the one that committed the murders. He still was there to rob the place and he still helped set the place on fire so he couldn't be trusted. But in 2018, after only serving 23 years of the 28 and a half year sentence, Travis was paroled. Martha even helped him by writing a letter to the parole board supporting his early release. Martha's family was upset that he was let out early. They told Martha that she just needed to cut off contact with him altogether. However, Martha believed there was good in him. Travis ended up returning to the Horseshoe Lake area because his mother still lived there. Martha would secretly hire Travis at the Snowden house to do odd jobs. Travis's mother actually still worked at the Snowden house as a housekeeper after all this time, which goes to show that Martha kept no grudges against the family. Although she did keep Travis's hiring a secret from her family and friends and all seemed to go fine for a couple of years. Then at the beginning of 2020, Travis's mother Gladys had a conversation with Martha. She told Martha that she needed to start distancing herself from her son Travis as Travis was kind of falling into old habits. She didn't want Martha or any of the property to suffer at the hands of her son. I think she was more afraid that Travis was going to try to rob the property again. Martha took it under advisement, but still believes Travis wouldn't do anything 
to hurt her or the property. After all, Martha helped him get out of jail early and even gave him a job. Unfortunately, some people will see Martha as an easy target and not a caring soul. On the morning of March 25th, 2020, authorities arrived at the Snowden house because the alarm had been set off. They found the back door to the Snowden house wide open and they cautiously stepped inside. They found Martha's lifeless body at the top of the staircase. She had been stabbed and bludgeoned to death. She was 63 years old. The authorities then realized that somebody was still in the house upstairs and they believed it to be the assailant. As they were going to investigate, they witnessed a man jump from the upstairs window all the way to the ground and he didn't seem to hurt himself. And then he quickly jumped in a car that was on the property and attempted to drive away. However, as he was driving the car through the yard, it got stuck in the mud. When he realized he was stuck and the car wasn't moving, he quickly jumped out of the car and he ran towards the lake and jumped in. The man appeared to try to swim, but then went under the surface of the water and never came back up. Authorities would call in fish and game, and by using sonar, they were able to locate the man's body and retrieved it from the lake. After they brought the body to shore, they were able to identify the man, and the family was devastated to learn that it was, in fact, Travis Lewis, who is now 39 years old. The man that the family fought to keep in jail to serve his entire sentence had yet allegedly taking another family member's life. Travis's mother stated that Travis was unable to swim, so he must have been really desperate to go for the lake as an escape route. However, during Travis's autopsy, they found that he was full of methamphetamine, cocaine, and marijuana, so he probably was not thinking clearly when he was trying to escape. Now, the motive for Martha's murder was not 100% clear. About a month before the murder, Martha had sold one of the home's grand chandeliers for $10,000. She received cash from the buyer, and so she hid the money in the home until she could get it to the bank. However, when Martha went to get the money to take to the bank, the money was then missing. Travis was the only worker in the house at the time, so it was pretty obvious who took it. Martha did confront Travis about this and ended up firing him on the spot. She also told him that he was forbidden to come back to the property. According to a diary that Martha kept, she was very embarrassed that she was proven wrong about Travis and that she should have listened to her friends and family and Travis's mother when she was warned. She became distraught that he had tricked her so long into thinking that he was rehabilitated and a becoming a good person and that after all that she had done for him she couldn't believe that he actually would steal from her martha's family was obviously devastated by losing another family member and they were left to wonder if martha never reached out to travis in the first place and befriended him would this have ever happened However, her family insisted that she did not deserve what happened to her and put the full blame on Travis. Joe Baker, who was actually Joseph Lewis Baker's son, the one who was killed in 1996, had stated this. I think that Martha really felt in her heart he deserved, being Travis, to be rehabilitated which I think really speaks to her character after such a tragic event happened to such a close family member. It was obvious that Martha was a very good person. So did Travis go there to seek revenge and actually plan to kill Martha? Or did he go there to try to rob the house again and by some bizarre twist of fate, maybe Martha caught him and it was a reenactment of 1996 almost where she caught him in the act and it resulted in her demise. Unfortunately, we don't know and won't know because the parties 
involved in this are both gone. The case is considered closed as they do believe that Travis murdered Martha. Today, the Snowden house is listed as temporarily closed, and I believe it's been that way since Martha's murder in March of 2020. The Facebook page for the Snowden house has not been updated since December 2019, which, was po which the last post was by Martha herself. And the official website for the Snowden house has also been taken down. So for now, it is unknown what the fate of the Snowden house is. What are your thoughts on this case? Now, I just want to say that it can be really easy to victim blame because of Martha's choices, but I don't want to see any of that, and, and I hope nobody puts that in the comments. Martha had a good heart and a trusting spirit, and we need more people like Martha in this world. You can be kind and smart at the same time but you have to make mistakes in order to get smarter. I myself has fallen for somebody's pleasant demeanor only to become a victim of their sinister agenda. Now I'm smarter for it and I will be able to recognize red flags the next time something like that may happen to me. Now I didn't lose my life learning the lesson, but I'm really sad that Martha did. But let's not lose sight that it was Travis that decided to take advantage of Martha's help. It was Travis that decided to return to the Snowden house after being told not to come back. And it was Travis who decided to ultimately end Martha's life that day. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. If you would like to become a feline friend, please hit that subscribe button. And we'll be back next Friday with another true crime case or mystery. Thanks guys, bye.